today I was inspired to make a video about the pelvic floor and how important it is and how much we forget about it. And I was inspired to make this video after I was gifted this super cool device. It's called a cooch ball. I'll show you guys what it looks like. Very, very cool. It has the instructions on the ball. It's basically just a little playground ball that with the right breathing techniques can be used to stretch and strengthen the pelvic floor in the same three minute exercise. It's not only the cooch ball, this is also the gooch ball. <laughs> uh, it's a product that is totally welcome for men to use men and people with penises also have pelvic floors and so you should also work on engaging those and preventing organ prolapse and other symptoms that you don't want uh, when you get older. So you might be asking, why should I care about the pelvic floor? I've never even heard of this muscle group until you're talking about it right now. So the pelvic floor is arguably one of the most important muscle groups in our body. It allows us to run, jump, sneeze, cough, lift weights. Um, it has kind of three main functions, a sexual, sensual, sphincteric. So there's sphincters that work with the pelvic floor and the pelvic floor has the job of making sure that those stay intact. And the third is support. I'm gonna talk about the support aspect a little bit more because I think that this is really important and not enough people think about this. But if you think about your abdomen, right, or core as a box or a house, you've got the diaphragm as the roof, uh, and then you've got the walls, which would be like your rectus abdominis muscles, your transverse abs, maybe your lats and your, um, erector spinae muscles that keep us standing up straight like I'm trying to do right now. But anyway, all these muscles do a good job at keeping everything in our core and keeping every, all of our um, organs in the right place. The floor of this house, of the basement maybe, uh, would be the pelvic floor. And so it's this bowl of muscles, basically. I wish I had better teaching props. I'm still trying to save up money to get some better anatomic teaching props, but for now I'm gonna have to use my hands. Uh, it's basically a bowl of muscles that go in all directions and these muscles sit between the bones at the bottom of the pelvis and their job basically is to hold up your entire abdominal contents and in a lot of cases work against both gravity and increased intra-abdominal pressure. So what does that mean? Like anytime that you cough or sneeze or jump or run, like kind of bear down or lift things, you're increasing that intra-abdominal pressure which is pressing down on your pelvic floor. And the pelvic floor has the really hard job of working against that intra-abdominal pressure and against gravity to keep all of our organs inside our body and from things like prolapse and um, basically our organs kind of going places that they shouldn't go. So pelvic floor dysfunction can really happen to anyone and is a lot more common than you would think. Um, maybe you had a baby or a couple babies or maybe you just have some muscle weakness for different reasons. A lot of us are sitting in really weird positions when we work. I know when I study, I sometimes like sit in a little ball or I, I tend to like hunch over like this. And what we do when we do this is we are taking away space from our core and the kind of abdominal compartment and we're compressing everything. And it's not healthy for our pelvic floor because we're not really doing anything to engage those muscles and to train them to be good at their job. And so by these weird positionings that we're doing, we're doing, we're probably weakening our pelvic floor by sitting in weird positions like this. So sitting up straight would be the first step. Maybe you're having pain with intercourse. Um, maybe you're just noticing that when you run or jump or cough or sneeze, you are like releasing a little bit of urine and you don't really want to be doing that. Um, there's definitely things that we can do. It's definitely a good idea to talk to your doctor about this, but one intervention that you could definitely try is this cooch ball that was designed by a really, really genius um, Pilates instructor slash entrepreneur named Jana. And the idea of the ball is to incorporate movement and to engage not just the pelvic floor muscles like you might think about during um, Kegel exercises, which is just kind of isolated pelvic floor contraction and relaxation. But the idea is to engage the co-recruiter muscles that work with the pelvic floor because our muscles don't really ever work by themselves. They work with co-recruiters. And with movement and breath work, you can engage the pelvic floor more dynamically. Another thing that's really interesting is that symptoms of a overly tight pelvic floor and an overly loose pelvic floor can actually be kind of similar. So it's a little hard to discern which problem 
problem that you're having, which is why this exercise is really good because you're doing both stretching and strengthening and not too much of either. So this product was actually developed under the guidance of a urogynecologist named Dr. Bruce Crawford. Uh, and with this team, they basically researched what makes a healthy pelvic floor and what exercises can be done to kind of maximize pelvic floor workouts. So what they found is that the pelvic floor works with a lot of co-recruiters. It works with muscles like the gluteus medius and the transverse abs. Um, it works with the diaphragm. It works with our AD ductors. Med school. So basically, in order for muscles to work properly, they need a couple things. One thing that they need to know is when to work and when to rest. And when they're spending too much time working, that muscle can become what we call hypertonic, which is like overly engaged, tense, um, that can kind of contribute to the pain with sex symptoms. And then when we never engage this muscle from just like sitting around all day, maybe never doing Kegels before, never really putting thought into exercising our pelvic floor, it can become hypotonic, which would be kind of overly, overly lax, under perfused, not really getting enough blood flow. So when we don't use these muscles or we use them incorrectly, they start doing a bad job of what they're supposed to be doing, which can give us those symptoms that some of us are looking to alleviate. Another thing that every muscle group needs is healthy tissue and fascia. And the way that that happens is getting oxygen and nutrient rich blood to perfuse the tissues. We sit so much. Uh, a lot of us have had kind of trauma to our body or previous injuries that may have kind of rendered us and unable to move in ways that we used to. And this all affects our pelvic floor, which kind of, instead of being juicy and filled with good oxygen and nutrient rich blood, it becomes kind of dry and uh, not in ideal function as we would like. Our goal is to both stretch and strengthen the pelvic floor, send in oxygen and nutrient rich blood, and get those dry, underused pelvic floor muscles perfused and juicy and happy and engaged and also stretched. <laughs> so the basic idea of this is that you sit on it for um, about three minutes a day and after figuring out what positions that you wanna use, you can incorporate uh, what is called diaphragmatic breathing, which if you are a yoga or Pilates person, you've probably heard of this before, but when you actually get the ball in the mail, it comes with a video series where Joanna teaches a really, really helpful kind of breathing technique that I'm gonna try to kind of explain, but she does a way better job of explaining it. All right, so I'm going to hop on this ball. Um, it comes with this really nifty little pump that you can fill it up with air, um, you can also take air out of it, which is something that I did. I found that it was a little too firm for me and my pelvic floor was really tight. And so I took some of the air out of it. Maybe we'll add some back in as it starts opening up. Uh, but I've been doing this for a week and I already noticed definite change, especially when I'm sitting on the ball. So the basic idea, uh, my, my technique is I do the like mother hen technique. Um, so you basically just like put it here. It says on the ball, Place between pubic bone and anus, sit in the ball for two to three minutes a day. So you're gonna sit on the ball, put it in the spot, it might feel a little bit weird at first. It's actually starting to feel like kind of good for me because I've been doing it so much that my body's like waking up to it and actually kind of likes this movement exercise with the ball there. So uh, ideally you wanna start creating axial elongation. Um, so keep a line from your top of your head to your tailbone and it definitely might take some time. You might uh, feel a little bit uncomfortable and want to come off the ball for the first, after like 15 seconds, that's totally cool. But you ideally want to work up into doing like two to three minute long sessions and incorporating the diaphragmatic breathing. I like to breathe in through my nose and then out through my mouth like I'm blowing on glass. And when you do that, you're going to breathe into your hand. So your belly is going to fill into your hand. This is me kind of trying to describe diaphragmatic breathing. Um, but you breathe into your hand and then when you exhale, you're going to kind of move your belly away from your hand. So that looks like this. Cool. And then um, you can add muscle work into it. So when you're doing your deep breath in, what you can kind of visualize is your hip bones kind of moving apart when you are doing your breath in and your muscle relaxing onto the ball. So you breathe in. Hip bones come apart, you feel your muscles relaxing on the ball. This is all one movement. It kind of takes a while to get used to. And then when you exhale, you're going to gently, gently tighten um, or con 
contract those muscles in. And it's not a Kegel. It's definitely not a Kegel. It's a lot more subtle than that. A Kegel would be like a really harsh contraction on and off. This is not like that. This is like after you just relax your muscle with your inhale, when you exhale, you're going to gently contract and it's almost like your muscles, your pelvic floor muscles are picking up a grape and you don't want to push it. Or it's just a very subtle clench feels like the wrong word to use, but like gentle clench. It's a gentle clench. So I'll demo and come to explain what I'm doing and then do two breaths without it. So ooh, I've been doing this ball for a long time. I'm getting good at this. <laughs> Breathe in. Feel your hip bones spread apart. Feel the pelvic floor muscle relax on the ball. You exhale. Feel those hip bones come together and feel that muscle gently contract like you're picking up a grape. positions that you can try. Actually, I come off my egg. Ooh. Okay. So first of all, right when I come off the egg, I, I mean, I keep calling it the egg. It's not an egg. It's a little bouncy ball. <laughs> but right when I come off of the ball, I feel like I'm sitting in a little nest. Everything feels a little bit more opened up. I can imagine that if you are someone that is planning on giving birth, um, or pregnant, that sitting on this ball for three minutes a day would definitely not be the worst idea in the world. And it's probably a really good idea to kind of train your hips to open up and your pelvis to um, be comfortable being more open up. Um, so it doesn't feel as much stress when you're going to put it through the stress of labor. Another way you can sit on the ball, which um, I think is like kind of hard for me at this point in the game, but you kind of cross your legs and sit on it like cross-legged and the goal is to create axial elongation. This one is a little bit harder for me, um, but in the video she said you can kind of like bear your weight forward if you want um, to support yourself a little. I'm a pretty big fan of this little playground ball. I'm definitely going to be using it as much as I can. I feel like it's doing really good things for my body and learning about my pelvic floor along the way has been really cool and felt really important. And now I know not to neglect a muscle that does such an important job. Uh, so if you feel like this is something that you should also get on and that you haven't been giving your pelvic floor enough tension, make sure to check out Cooch Ball and Gooch Ball. I'll link all their information in the description below. All right, that's it for me. I've got a bunch of really fun content coming out soon. I've been really stressed in school. We're like about to finish our GI module, but making this page and having this creative outlet has been really, really nice for me. Kind of has been keeping me sane during this next chapter of quarantine. Um, and winter of COVID. So I've really been enjoying making this page. I've really enjoyed the DMs I get and the messages I get and some really cool opportunities have been popping up. So I really hope that you guys have been enjoying the content I've been making. If you have any recommendations for content, please feel free to DM me. I honestly come up with most of my ideas because of DMs or comments that I hear from people. So if you ever think of something that you think would be good for me to cover, please let me know. Uh, but that's it for me. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye. <laughs>